Beyond Boundaries Ministries. And I welcome each one of you uh, to the Bible Study Fellowship. Uh, we thank God for this uh, opportunity uh, for us to share the Word of God together, as uh, we always do on uh, Tuesdays uh, at this time. Uh, we have actually started a bit uh, late, a few minutes late, so we apologize for that. Uh, today, I am actually going to be just by myself. And of course, I have the team that is here with us, uh, our children. And uh, our dear evangelist is uh, resting her voice. Of course, we know that she's been in the studio all along, all through. And uh, she will still be there again in the morning. So it will be good to give her time to rest and continue with the ministry that God has given her. So even as we start this fellowship, Let's uh, be prepared to receive from the Lord. And I believe each one of us is going to be uh, transformed by the word. As we start the, uh, the fellowship, let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I give you praise. I give you the adoration because you're a good God. Thank you for this uh, fellowship, this Bible study fellowship. As we start off, oh, Father, your presence that is always with us. You're working with us. You have already anointed me to deliver that message that which you want your people to hear that is going to bring transformation into our lives oh father we thank you and we honor you because you're good god thank you father even for those who are listening those who are going to watch this uh, this uh, bible study fellowship that lord they are going to be transformed by your word and we receive this from you because it's that which you have already prepared for us we thank you and we honor you for it is in christ jesus I do pray and give thanks. Amen and amen, amen. So, uh, can we start with the worship? Uh, yes. Thank you very much. I believe you also prepared there, and I welcome each one of you. Uh, thank you. God is good all the time. There's nothing you cannot do. Start amazing your presence. There's joy, there is joy, peace and hope. There's no one like you. Jesus, there's no one like you in all the earth, in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. I stand there amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, peace, and hope. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, no the earth, no the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You 
That is awesome, and I thank God uh, for uh, that uh, worship. The Lord is good and He's faithful. And uh, we have to continue giving Him all the praise at all times. And we have to thank Him in everything that we do. In everything, we give thanks because that is His will for us in Christ Jesus. I know that uh, last week on Tuesday, uh, we had uh, what we were actually focusing on. And I remember as we were ending the fellowship, I said that uh, we need to get to know uh, that there is that ministry of death and there is that ministry of righteousness. And we need to uh, bring this together and reconcile so that we get to know why is it that even as believers, why is it that we experience death, that we already have the new covenant we have already been given all that we need by grace. God has made the provision for everything. So, dear ones, as we get to this uh, study, I want us to focus and get to hear. We listen and we hear the voice of God so that we get to see that which is actually making us not enjoy every benefit that we already have by God of God's grace. I know it's not easy. It sounds uh, easy. It sounds simple. But when it comes now to apply, because we have the wisdom of Christ became our wisdom. So we have to apply these truths into our lives. And I know if we can, if we can actually get to study and get to have this revelation knowledge and have our hearts opened because Faith, we know, comes by hearing. We have to hear the voice of God. And our spirits are actually made to hear God so we can hear God. So even as you get to listen to this, I believe, unfortunately, I cannot see you all, but I know you are there and you are listening. And I know that you're going to be transformed by the word of God. So, Last time, you remember, we mentioned about uh, that we are not under the law, uh, but we are under grace. And this is a new dispensation. This is where we are. We have been placed, and God has given us this ministry so that we do not minister death, but we minister life. The Spirit gives life. But we know that the law, when we focus on the law, what does this mean? That it is us trying to get to do what we can actually only receive by grace so that we can have the blessings of God, so that we can receive that which is already there by grace. We receive it by faith and not by our works. We are not going to get into all those details, but let's just get to read the scripture first and now get to understand what does this mean. We said we're going to read 2 Corinthians uh, from chapter 3. And I am going to start from, uh, let me start from verse, from verse 4. So dear ones, I know this is a Prayers Beyond Boundaries uh, Ministries uh, Bible Study Fellowship. We have our friends, uh, those who are joining us, and if you're there, we welcome you. This is open to everyone, but we normally have the Bible Study fellowship on Tuesdays, but because we have this lockdown, 
and we also have the curfew, so we cannot be in church. So we are doing it from home. And as I said earlier, today I am just by myself, evangelist, our dear mom, our founder that we thank God for, because if it was not for her, we would not even be having this Bible study fellowship. So we thank God for her, and we continue uh, believing that God is going to continue using her in the ministry that she has, even in command, yeah, that she's reaching out to so many people. She's a blessing. She's gifted in that. So we thank God for her, but she's going to continue. And I'm sure next week on Tuesday, she will be with us. So as we get to study, continue praying for her and thanking God for her. So uh, let's read from um, 2 Corinthians. And this is uh, from chapter 3, verse 4. I'm going to start off from there. And we have, I'm reading from the New King James Version. And we have such trust through Christ toward God. We have such trust through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. What does it mean, not of the letter? What does this mean? That we are not ministers of the letter, but of the new covenant, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. That which is of the letter, I'm sure we can all tell and we know that this is actually uh, telling us that is a ministry of death. We are going to read that even as we continue reading. But the ministry of this, uh, that is of the letter, is of the law, the law that was given to Moses. So I read that again. That we are, uh, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter. So that we are sufficient now of the new covenant. So there's this ministry of the new covenant and not that of the letter. So we are supposed to be moving away from that ministry of the letter to this ministry of the new covenant, where, where the spirit of the letter, the spirit, but the spirit, let me read that again, sorry about that. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But, this now is in verse 7. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stone. So this confirms that the ministry of death, now here it is being called the ministry of death. And it's the same issue here that is being addressed that the letter kills. So this letter is about this ministry of death, written and engraved on stone. And we know this is actually the Ten Commandments. Was glorious. I want us to know that word, and you underline that word. That ministry was glorious. So that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance. So the children of Israel could not look directly to him because of the glory. And of course, Moses was actually, uh, if I would say, Moses knew that because that glory was fading away. You're going to read that here. That glory was fading away. So the children of Israel could not look directly into him. But that ministry had glory. Let's continue. Because, and kindly just try and note, how, how many times does the uh, word glory or glorious uh, be mentioned in the scripture? In just this chapter alone, so, because Moses, because of the glory of his countenance, which glory, note that word again, glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? 
That is the question. How will the ministry, how will the ministry, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm not seeing this very clearly. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? So there was still glory in the ministry of death that was fading away. And here, now there is a ministry of the Spirit. How will it not be more glorious? I want us to reflect back again and see where did this come from? Because it's important that we get to understand why that there is this ministry that was still glorious, the one that Moses had, and the ministry that now is of the Spirit that is more glorious. Let's first read uh, all the way. And then we are going to get back again and see where did it start from. I want us to focus on this. If this ministry is more glorious, for if the ministry of condemnation, now note again, this has now been called the ministry of condemnation. It's a, it's a letter kills, the ministry of death, and now here, the ministry of condemnation had glory. The ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. Hallelujah. This is awesome. So the ministry of death, the ministry of condemnation, the letter that kills, because this letter kills. But now here we are told the ministry of righteousness exceeds with glory. So the, this ministry that Moses, uh, the, the ministry of death that came with Moses, about the Ten Commandments that was given to Moses. This was not directly from God. God did want this, but this was given. It was actually on the side. And this means if that ministry had glory, and now the ministry of the ministry of righteousness exceeds with glory. Focus on that word, glory. Right? That tells us that we need to be focusing more on this ministry of glory. What is actually the context here? The context is actually focusing on this glory. We know that Moses, if he had that glory that was fading away, that was passing away, and the children, because actually he was very smart that he didn't want the children of Israel to see that glory that was on him fading away. He had that veil. We are going to get to that. That veil. And that veil was actually obstructing now from actually seeing him, seeing that glory that was in him because it was fading away. Uh, we are going to have this more clearly. We're going to understand it as we get to the end of this chapter. Let's continue with this and have this, um, as I was mentioning, have, have this word, glory and glorious. That's where the focus is, so that we see for ourselves today, where are we? Where are we? For if, I continue, this is in verse 11. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. It has been repeated again. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. You know, it's important that we get to focus and try to digest uh, on this because this will have a great impact when we have the revelation, knowledge, and get to see what is it that God is trying uh, through the Apostle Paul is giving us so that we get to have this light coming into us so that we can enjoy every uh, power that is contained here in, in this glory that is exceeding. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think or imagine. Are we together here? Therefore, I'm continuing. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face. This is what I was saying. He put that veil over his face. He was really smart. He put a veil over his, over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. 
But their minds were blinded. For until this day, their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away to Christ. In Christ, not to Christ. It's taken away in Christ. I want us to go back again to the book of uh, Exodus. Just a little. Oh, yeah. We go back to the book of Exodus. But have this in mind about this glory. This glory that is fading away. And Moses could be able to tell. Hey, let me get to Exodus. Can we open Exodus? Exodus 33. We get back there and we're going to see this. Sorry that today I'm uh, all by myself. If mom was here, uh, she would be reading those who are with us, those who are following us. Uh, but now it is uh, different today, but it's only for today. I'm sure Tuesday we'll be together again. And you know, she's gifted in that. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I will try and see whether I can be able to read those who are there with us, who are following us. Uh, but mom is so good in that. You are Mezoya. Uh, but uh, with me, it's different, but I will try and do it. I am still learning. I am still growing in this. Uh, I'm still growing in this. So, dear ones, let's uh, read this again, just to compare these two. Uh, and, uh, this actually, I'm reading from the King New, uh, New King James Version again. Uh, this is in uh, Exodus 33. I'm going to read from verse 12. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you said to me, bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send me with. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. So I want you to see this. Moses was telling God that you have actually, you have the way God had already told him, you have found grace in my sight. So Moses here is telling the Lord, I have found grace in your sight. So there is grace, not that. There is grace because he has seen uh, yeah, this in the Lord. And the Lord had already told him that. Show me now. You can go and read the whole scripture so that you can, you can get the whole context of it. We might not delve into all that. But I just want you to have that picture so that you get to see that this glory that Moses is talking about and now what we have today. Show me now your way that I may know, I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, you see that there is grace there? And he said, my presence, now God changed because he had already told, told them that I'm not going to go with you. But now here he said, my presence will go with you. So there was, God actually changed and agreed and I said, and said that now my presence is going to go with you and I will give you rest. What picture is this? Because this one actually is, is actually showing us that glory, the, the one that Moses had. There is something that he was seeing in this. If you get to study this and get to have this revelation that Moses found grace, we are in which dispensation? We are in this dispensation of grace. But here, Moses has, has found grace in the sight of God. So you find grace in the sight of God. So that means that glory that Moses was seeing, yeah, he was seeing that glory, which for him, he could not be able to attain it. But he had already seen it. Are you getting this? Dear ones, I want us to open our hearts and get to think about it. But here, he is seeing it. Because now, he has grace. He has been promised the presence of the Lord. Isn't this what we actually have in this dispensation? We have God's grace. He promised that his presence will always be with us at all times. And he will never leave us nor forsake us. But Moses here is saying that he has found favor. He has found grace in his sight. So he's seeing something, and this glory that he's seeing, 
He's desiring it. And the Lord, he has promised, my presence will go with you. I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how will how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight? Except you go with us, so we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, this is verse 17, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. Yet listen to this, verse 18. And he said, please show me your glory. Get to see this. Now Moses is asking the Lord, please show me your glory. Hallelujah. So there's something that Moses was seeing here. It is like he's already in this dispensation. Yet he's the, uh, he's the one who brought in the law. But he's seeing this glory that he's desiring. And he's asking the Lord, show me this glory. So that we see this glory that he's talking about, Paul is talking about here and referring to. We need to get to have this understanding and to see and have this revelation. So that we can be free and know that we can have the same power, the one that we are supposed to be enjoying now, not from what was in the old, but now what is under this dispensation. We are in this church age, and we are under this new covenant. But this covenant of grace, this covenant, this ministry that brings life, and the other ministry that Akidu was bringing death, it is still ministering death for those who do not get to have this revelation. So let's get this very clear. And we get to see what is it that Moses is talking about here. No, Apostle Paul is talking about. So here, Moses has said, please show me your glory. In Exodus 33, verse 18. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. See that? The Lord is saying this. I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. That tells you there is that glory that Moses was seeing and was desiring, and he was asking the Lord to show, to show him that glory. So that that glory, which he was desiring, the Lord said, no, you cannot say that. But he has been already promised. It's like he already had this new dispensation, this grace that he's talking about, that he's found favor in the Lord, in his sight. His presence is also there. And he also promised that he's going to go with him, his presence and your glory. So there was still glory. But this glory is glory that was fading away. Let's continue in that same, same, same scripture up to the end. Uh, this is now in verse, I repeat again now from verse 18. And he said, please show me your glory. I, I am praying that you're going to get to see this. And your understanding is going to be opened up so that you are going to see about this glory. And this we understand about these two ministries. There is the ministry of death, the ministry of condemnation, and the, the ministry of righteousness. So that we can be able to differentiate and separate the two. And now enjoy that which the Lord has already given unto us. I read again. And he said, please show me, the glory. show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is, my, here is a place by me, and you shall see a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes, not the word glory again, while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. 
then I will take away my hand. So it's God who's saying this. I will take away my hand and you shall see my back. So Moses was only uh, actually uh, to see his back. But my face shall not be seen. So that tells you there is a glory that is there that Moses could not see. But see what he had, had glory. I hope this is coming out clear so that we get to see it. Na mili mna nielewa vile na sebo. Ya? That haitakuwa kitu tofauti. It's something that we are feeling. It's a scripture that we have been reading. But it's important that we see it in this context. So that we are able to see what is this glory that he's talking about. That glory that was there. Moses is the one who was given the law. And why was he given the law? Yeah, The law, as we said the other time, the law is one that strengthens sin. I know we have studied this and we, are, we, we have this understanding. But let's see about this glory so that we don't focus on this ministry of death. It still had glory, yes. But yeah, what does it bring? What does it produce? It brings death. Because if you focus on your on your on your works, on you performing so that God can bless you, God can heal you, God can provide for you, so that you can enjoy every benefit that is there from what God has already provided. And you're depending on yourself. You're depending on yourself. Then this tells you that you are under that ministry of and this ministry, we might not even be thinking about it, but what it's going to bear is just death. And that's why you find majority of believers, they are experiencing death. It's not that they want it, but they're experiencing death. Even in their relationships, you find that you do not want to have that kind of uh, an, an experience whereby instead of enjoying God's grace that is bringing out all this, that you have all this empowerment, that you are able to go through all these challenges. You end up experiencing death instead of experiencing this life that comes by the way of the Spirit of God. So that glory that was still there, but that was passing away, that glory that was passing away, Moses did not want the children of Israel to see that. Now, for us, we are better off in this dispensation that we are in so that we don't have to allow this to come into, uh, into us, but we have to make these choices. It is through the understanding, through the revelation, so that by God's wisdom, we are able to apply it into our everyday work of this life and know where we are positioned. It is not about our works, it's not about what we do, it's where we are, who we belong to, what we have on the inside of us. Let me continue with this again. Now we go back again to, uh, the, uh, the the teaching that Paul has, has given us in Second Corinthians chapter three. Here, I go back again now to verse fourteen. I read from there, but their minds were blinded. So their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. So that veil that Moses had still uh, remains there when you read the Old Testament. But you see, now for us, because the New Testament, we are supposed to bring out and show and see Jesus from that Old Testament. It is not that he wasn't there. He was still there. That glory was still there. But it was concealed. Now it is for us now, with this new dispensation, we bring out and we see Jesus in the same. But now we are under a new covenant that is more glorious, that is exceeding. It cannot be compared with that which is of the old. So here, the veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. So the veil is taken away in Christ. I don't want to delve into other areas. I want us to focus on this so that we see that this veil that Moses actually had is only taken away in Christ. But if 
Uh, this is in verse uh, 15. But even, even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Note that. A veil lies on their hearts. So if you still focus on that and you are under that ministry, that veil still remains in your heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, get this, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. I want us to think about this again. When you focus on the Lord now in this dispensation, the veil is taken away. But when you are under that ministry of death that still had glory, uh, note the number of times the word glory, glorious has been mentioned in this. So the focus is glory. So that we do not allow death yeah, to be coming forth, forth from us. We know the ministry of death is about the law that was given to Moses. But we know grace and truth came by who? By Jesus Christ. Uh, there, that is in uh, the book of John, chapter 1. We are not going to get into that right now. But I want us just to focus on this so that we see this glory that we talk about. That is being actually revealed to us here. So that we understand and be free and know where we are in. I'm going to continue repeating that. Because that power that is already in us, uh, you're going to get to see it and it's going to free. <clears throat> now, the Lord is the Spirit, verse 17. Second Corinthians, uh, verse 17. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. So we are supposed to be enjoying this freedom as believers. When you receive Christ, when you receive the Spirit of God in you, and you allow Christ now to dwell in you, then you are freed. Uh, we have the freedom. But, uh, verse 18, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. You see, there was that veil that Moses had that you could not see directly, you could not see clearly in him. But now we, with the unveiled, with that unveiled uh, face, you see, there was mention of the face here in Exodus. You connect this. The Lord said that my face shall not be seen. But now here, so what does this tell you? Which face was this that was being, uh, that was not being allowed Moses to see? And which is this veil that now unveiled face eh, for us today, but with, but we all with unveiled face. Here it was veiled. Moses could not see the face. Whose face was this? Of course, if you are seeing it today and where we are, this is the face of Jesus. The time had not come for Moses to see Jesus directly. So that's why the face shall not be seen as the Lord said. But here, for us, with unveiled face, it is not as we are actually having the veil. It was Moses who had the veil. But now the veil has been removed. So we can see the face of who? Of Jesus. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image. Now get this. Uh, we are being transformed uh, into the same image. Whose image? Jesus. From glory to glory. Okay, let's just pause there a little. I want us to think about this glory again. The context here is about this glory. The glory that was fading away and the glory that now we have that is exceeding the, the ministry of righteousness. With the unveiled face, when we behold this face that now is unveiled for us, then 
we are conformed into the same image. I know we have actually been teaching on this, but we have never even focused on this in detail to get to a, understand what does this mean. I know when we talk about glory, and we say that, yes, oh, me, I am blessed and I'm, I'm thanking the Lord. Yes, when you get blessed with a few things here and there, and you say that, yes, um, from, I've actually been promoted from this glory to another glory. Yes, it is still fine. It's still okay. It is still good. Because, yes, you're actually just explaining, but not in this context. You can actually be moved from one glory to another. That is still correct. And that's what we use is actually scripture for saying that we have been promoted from one glory to another. And we are being moved from one glory to another glory. But in this context, this is not what this is talking about. I want us to look at it again. I read again from verse 18. But we all, with unveiled face, that face that Moses could not see, but we all now, with the unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. So who are we seeing? We are seeing Jesus. We have access. Yeah, because of what? Because of what now Jesus already did through the cross. That Lord that was actually holding us back, that law, that veil that actually was making us not see, that was removed. And now for us, we have this glory in us that we are able to see the unveiled face of Jesus that Moses could not see. So, I repeat that, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, in this context, I want to ask you, the dear ones, in this context, what is this glory talking about? Yes, there was glory in the time of Moses, with his veiled face, and now there is more glory with the unveiled face that is exceeding. Now, I want you to see this, that the glory that is being talked about here is the glory that was there during the time of Moses. Are you seeing that? That glory, we have actually been moved, we are being confirmed from glory, the glory that was there with Moses, and now to this new dispensation, we have been shifted from this glory that was there with Moses to this glory. It is not about us. It is not about us uh, with our performance and what we acquire and what we attain that are being promoted from this glory to the other glory. No, but I am actually now moving from the glory that was fading away to the glory that is now uh, with the unveiled face that is exceeding the ministry of righteousness. So that we see this new glory. We have actually now, we are being conformed as we, we, we focus on him. And as we actually see this face of Jesus, then we are being conformed to his image. Are you saying that? We are being conformed to his image as we behold this face, the unveiled face. I hope this is... Uh, uh, coming out in a way that you're going to understand uh, yeah, so that we get to see, unfortunately, for those who are uh, who are not understanding in, in this in uh, English, I know Evangelist is very good at expounding this in and even translating it in Kikui, so that in Hebrew, let me just use that word that she uses, in Hebrew, uh, you, might, you might be missing it, but I'm sure even as we have this study again, even next week, I believe she'll be able to bring it out for those who are not getting to understand this uh, in this language that we are speaking. But I want you to see that that glory uh, to this other glory that now we are in, just as by the Spirit of the Lord, it is not by us. Because of what Jesus did through the cross and what the law, the law actually, as we are saying, the law was demanding from us. But Jesus paid the price. What the law could not do, he did. And now for us is to believe. For us, it's by faith. It has already been done. So for us, we have been moved by what Jesus did. 
from that glory that was fading away now to this new glory in this dispensation. And this is where now the ministry that gives life comes in. It is so powerful. Actually, when you get to see this and you go to the next chapter, because this, is, of course, is continuous. It's only that it's broken into chapter 3 and chapter 4. But when you get to the next chapter, you will see, and if you get to study all of it, we are not going to go into all the details here, but I would want us to see uh, in... Uh, this is... Let me read from uh, verse 4, chapter 4, verse 4. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. You remember what you were talking about that? Uh, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. So the God of this age blinds people, yeah, so that we don't get to see this glory that now we are in. We are in this glory. Let's continue reading that. It's going to come out clear. Whose image of God should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, uh, for we do not preach ourselves, we do not preach ourselves, but Christ the Lord Jesus, and ourselves, your own servants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded the light to shine, see, light to shine, but out of darkness, but, no, sorry, out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory. I'm still focusing on that word, glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I hope you're saying this. It is God, for it is God, it is the God who commanded. If you remember, even in the uh, book of Genesis, that it is God who spoke light into existence. So this light that he spoke into existence, he is the one who has made this light to shine in us. The light shone and out of darkness. Light to shine out of darkness. Who has shone in our hearts. Now, this is in our hearts now. To give the light of the knowledge. It is God who is doing that, giving the light of knowledge in our hearts. So this now is not depending on us, but it is what God has already done for us. That this glory, what does the word glory mean? Yes, glory, of course, uh, in this context, this means that there is that way, there is that heaviness, there is that power that is already there. Uh, that in his glory, that he has already shown in our hearts. Now we can have that light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So when we focus on him, this glory, this weight, this heaviness of the glory of God, because when we have the spirit of God in us, we have his glory in us. So we have now his power dwelling in us. I hope you can actually get to see this. That now it is now for us because we know this is where we are. You see, when we get to read the next uh, uh, verse, you are going to see this because this is still continuous. There is a lot that I would want even to uh, to actually bring out in the same scripture, in chapter three, uh, and in chapter four, because it is actually continuous, so that we get to see about this ministry of death. We'll go back again to this a little later. But I want you to say this, that now this is not dependent on us. It is depending on what has already been done for us. We already have this glory in us as believers once we receive Christ Jesus. Let's read uh, verse 7. We continue so that we get to see what does this mean for us today. In verse 7. But we have this treasure. You see, what treasure is this? What is it that say, Paul is talking about here? 
saying this treasure. What treasure do we have? But we have this treasure. This is the glory. In other vessels, we have this glory in these other vessels, in these bodies, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. You see, this is actually now coming out more clearer. But we have this treasure in other vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side. I remember I was mentioning this on uh, Sunday, saying that I would not want to get into this because it's quite deep and it's good to have this understanding. I'm not saying that I have the full revelation of it, but what I've been able to see in this that now empowers us because now under grace and under this ministry uh, of uh, this ministry that gives life and not death. The other ministry that Moses had was the ministry of death. Now in this new covenant, we have life. It's a spirit that gives life. And when we get to see and understand that we are in these other vessels, but we have this treasure in us, this glory, the power of God is in us. And we are not under that glory that was fading away, but now we are in this glory with the unveiled face that we are able to see, that Moses could not see. But for us now, we can see. We can see Jesus. Moses could not be able to see him because the time had not come. And God could not have allowed that to take place at that time because there was still a process that uh, the children of Israel, and even for us today, that we need to learn and understand that by the law, uh, we cannot, we cannot be able to add or even gain anything. The law was given for us to be able to bring out the sin that we could not be able to have the understanding of. When we get to Galatians, we get to see that. But so we are not going to study that today. I want us to have this so that we see this glory that is already in us. And when you have this glory in you and you get to have the understanding of this revelation, then when you see now that uh, uh, when we talk about that uh, this ministry of death that is bringing out, you will not want to function under that ministry of death. Paul was talking that to the Galatians and they were believers also, but it's like they had not had that revelation. They could not understand it. So that's why they were allowing even the curse to come upon them. I'm sure each one of us, I hope, and it's my prayer, that you have actually read uh, Deuteronomy 28, the chapters from chapter 1 to 14 about the blessing and the curses from chapter 15 all the way to uh, verse 68. Because that one actually shows you and you see what is it that we have. That we don't have to allow because it's a choice that we're going to make. And we have to do this with this knowledge, with this understanding so that we don't allow ourselves to be uh, under that ministry of death, because the enemy wants us to remain there, the God of this age, as we have read here. Uh, because he blinds people, and this is why he blinds people, so that you don't see this glory. He is after you and after me, not to see this glory. Because if he blinds you from seeing this glory, then you will remain in this bondage. And in this bondage, there is no way you'll be enjoying that which God has already availed to us. It is given to us. It is not something that we have worked for. It is given. I believe you're understanding this, that this is what is given to us. It is not something that we are earning. So in these other vessels, if we are pressured from all sides, we have issues that we face in this life, like even what we're going through in this pandemic. There's a lot of pressure that is coming in. Even when we get into a relationship, there is a lot of pressure that comes in. And this pressure that is actually coming in, it's coming to destroy us. And that's why the enemy does not want us to see this glory. But it is my prayer that you are going to have this revelation knowledge and understanding so that that veil is removed and you see your position and where you stand, where you have been placed, what has been given to us. And when you are freed in that area, then you will rightly choose knowing what you already possess. God is so good and what he has planned for us. 
The one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. So if I have this understanding and this revelation, I will not just be saying it, I'll be seeing it. Because I'll be seeing what God sees in me. And when I see what God sees in me, the power that he has already, uh, that he has already given me, that is already in me, in this dispensation, this glory that he has actually put in our hearts, it's already there. Then I will function with power and I will know that I cannot be defeated by the enemy. We all face, uh, because in these earthen vessels, in these body suits that we have, that are perishing, these bodies are perishing, yes. But what is in us is not dying, it's actually even becoming more glorious. Let's read, let's continue reading here. That we are hard pressed on every side. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. So we are not crushed. Even if we are hard pressed, we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, uh, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. So it is important that you see this. Always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are, are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. This is what Apostle uh, Paul was actually talking about. But we, as we have the life, they suffered, and they suffered, they went through a lot of hardships. But for us, we have been given this now that we learn and we get to see what we have in the inside of us. Uh, we are not going to get into all the details of this, but let's see about this glory. So that this ministry, when we go back again to chapter 3, and you see this ministry of death and this glory that was fading away, that now when we function under this glory, uh, under the glory that is fading away, by depending on what we do, that this law that is demanding from us, yet grace is making available and has already given us. It's already given to us in our hearts and we already have it. Then we will not allow, we will not be choosing this uh, ministry of death, the letter that kills. I know there is a lot that is still taught even today, uh, even in churches, about the Ten Commandments and how we are supposed to keep them, keep them. And I'm not saying that they are not glorious. They are. But we cannot meet that standard, each one of us. So we need to focus and know that now the glory that is already in me is empowering me because now I have the grace of God in me, his presence in me. And now with that, I know I am not going to allow the enemy to come and take away that which is already in me. I will expound on this uh, further as we continue, even in the next uh, uh, teaching. But I would want us to uh, maybe just uh, read that one scripture about the cast in, uh, in Galatians. We go to Galatians 3. I am not mixing this, but I just want us, because of this ministry of death, the, uh, this ministry of death, we need to... Uh, get out of it and know that we are not supposed to be functioning in it because it only brings death. And I'm going to read from uh, verse 10. I, I, I'm reading this so that we can continue from there next week. I will still reflect on this so that those who did not have that understanding because of just explaining it in that one language, we can have now the Hebrew uh, with our mom so that she can actually expound on that, we get to see this light. We'll be able to see it better. I'm sure for those who did not get to have this understanding. It is not an easy teaching. Yes, uh, it has taken me also a, 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 a whole a lot of a while for me to get, be able to understand this and to see it and to have it in me. But I believe this is so freeing. It is so freeing that when you get to understand it, not just saying that I am, yes, being uh, moved from one glory to another, but you have the understanding of what does that mean? 
and what is it that you have? What, what is it that you have already been given that is already in you? So that you don't function under this ministry that is of death. Are you together? So uh, yeah, let's get uh, to uh, read this so that we leave it from there. For as many, uh, Galatians 3 verse 10, for as many as are of the works of the law, those who are depending on the law to receive from God, because if you do not function in every uh, aspect of this law and perform it perfectly to the letter, this is the letter that kills. For as many, I read again, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written. And you know that for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. So even as a believer, if you are under the works of the law, depending on yourself, that you are, you are actually now uh, performing so that you can receive from God and not knowing that you have already been given this ministry, uh, this ministry of righteousness that is already given to you. You have this light so that you see the unveiled face. Then you are under a curse. And that's why I mentioned in Deuteronomy 28 that you get to see the curse that are there. In fact, it's so depressing even when you read them. And you wonder that if I am actually under the law, I'm factoring under the law, then I am under a curse. So the sicknesses, uh, the poverty, and all these uh, curses that have been mentioned there will come upon us. Yet it's not God's will, because we have already been given, uh, we have already been given this glory that is already in us. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cast is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the Lord to do them. So you have to continue. I'm not going to expound on it, but we are going to study this as we, we do this next week on Tuesday. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith, yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. The man who does them shall live by them. So I'm going to end, that, uh, end this at this. That let's purpose, let's desire to allow the glory that is already in us, even if we are in these other vessels, we know that the one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. Though we are even being pressed from every direction, yeah, even in this time that we are going through this pandemic, yeah, we are being pressed from every direction in every area, economically, even in relationships with our families, uh, our spouses, and all that. I know there are so many hardships that are coming to us, but when we get to understand what is already in us, this glory, then we will not be defeated because we'll see it as it is written for us in, uh, in uh, chapter 4 that we are not going to be defeated in any way because of who already is in us. Hallelujah. God is so good. He wants us to see this so that we don't just focus on that which is passing away. And actually, it's actually did pass away. But we function there, and we are under a curse. And this is what brings death. This is what brings death. We wonder why is it that I am experiencing death in the things that I am doing in my relationship. I find that that I am actually not enjoying that which has already been promised and that has already been given by grace. But death comes. We know that because of what was there before, through Adam, death reigned. But because of Jesus, now we have life and ministry of righteousness. So let's desire to have this and understand that now with that, we are in a different dispensation. We have this glory. We have this power. We have this weight that is already in us. And we are not going to be perplexed. Even if we are perse persecuted, even if we have this pressure coming upon us, 
that which he does is in us is going to push out and we are going to enjoy that victory that has already been won for us. We have the power. In Jesus' name, God loves you and God wants the best for you. Hallelujah. God uh, for that opportunity uh, that uh, through the word that is freeing us that as we focus on Jesus we are being conformed into his image and this is by the spirit it's not by us and it's by us getting to understand and receiving that which has been given to us as we said last week and I thank God for all that he has done I believe there's somebody there who has received a word that is going to bring that transformation. As we agreed last uh, Tuesday, that we'll be having the, we'll be receiving uh, the communion, the Eucharist. Uh, I'm sure if you're remembering that, you have already prepared yourself. That's, uh, you have your bread or whatever else you might be having. Oh uh, yeah, whether it's cake, whether it's a piece of biscuits, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. And you have, and the cup of blessing ready, the, signifying the blood of Jesus and the bread, the body of Jesus, so that we can receive uh, the communion together. We know that this is what we were commanded to do, that we uh, do this in remembrance of him and what has been done for us. When we receive the bread, we know earlier uh, his body was broken for our healing. So healing is already there in us. And as we receive the bread and we feed on him, we are made whole. As we feed on him, we have this understanding by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. So we believe that we are healed and we know that in our bodies, if there is any part of you that is healing, you know that every cell, every organ, every function in the body is healed. You believe it is by faith. It is all by faith. And even with a cup of blessing, you know, this was for the forgiveness of sins. And we know by the shedding of blood, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. But we know the Lord Jesus suffered, he sacrificed and suffered and shed his own blood for us to be forgiven of all sins, past, present, and future. And we have already been forgiven but we receive the Lord's table in remembrance of him. And that's why we are supposed to be focusing on him and we keep on seeing him, this glory that is already in us so that we can have this understanding and allow this power to work in us and through us and impact other lives. Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us. And we, as we receive the, the Lord's table, we, we sanctify these elements. And we know that the bread signifying the body of Jesus and the cup of blessing, the, body, the blood of Jesus, we receive with thanksgiving, knowing that the power that is signified here is working. Dear ones, when we have the bread, we believe that we are already made whole. We stand on that ground. With the cup of blessing, we know all our sins forgiven and we partake of the inheritance of the righteous. 
Of course, I know there are those who say that you have to make yourself worthy. You cannot make yourself worthy. We are not worthy, but we are made worthy okay, when we do what is right. So we are actually, when we put worth into the communion, we are putting worth in it. We give it value by putting worth in what has been done for us, not what we do, not what we have failed to do. It, it is what has been done for us. We are putting worth in what the Lord Jesus suffered for our sake. So when we put worth, not us being unworthy, but it is us putting worth in what he has done. And as we receive, we know that now all the benefits that are there in the Lord's table, that because we dine in him and we are receiving from him, we are feeding on him, we are drinking his blood. Every promise that has been given is now for our benefits. It's on our side. We are after the cross. So it is for us to enjoy and give thanks to him and know that the power is already there. And we receive this knowing it's for our benefit. So with your bread, I know you have your bread ready with you, and the cup of blessing so that we can partake together. You receive by faith the bread signifying the body and we are feeding on, on him the body of Jesus, the body uh, because with him, you know, he's a, he's a true living bread and we are feeding on him and knowing that when I feed on him, I am strengthened. I am made whole. So believe that. Know that you are strengthened. God is so good. And now we receive the bread together. Thank you. Signifying the blood of Jesus that was shed for our sake for the forgiveness of sins. And we know life is in the blood, is sin free, disease free, poverty free life is in the blood. His blood. And we partake of the righteousness. And we become now the righteousness of God. We know we, we are now partaking the inheritance. Those who are righteous, who have been made righteous, knowing that all our sins are forgiven, <clears throat> past, present, and future. We could take up the cup, knowing that now with the cup, I am sealed from any satanic attack. Believe it that you are sealed from any satanic attack. And as you take the cup, you know that you are now free from any sin. We thank God for all that you have done for us the sacrifice that was made for our sake. And now we know that we enjoy everything that God has already given us through Christ Jesus and in him. God is so good. We partake of the cup. Let's receive the cup together.
Hallelujah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Father, for the gift of righteousness, the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that in him we are made righteous, that we now partake the inheritance of the righteous, which is preservation, wholeness, health, provision, deliverance, that there is no lack. And we know that health springs forth from that which you have already given unto us. We give you praise. I declare healing for those who have been ailing. I declare provision. Where there, is, where there seems to be lack, we know that there is no lack in the kingdom. I give you all the praise, glory, and honor because you're a good God. In Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Amen and amen, amen. I know you're there. Hey, I, if uh, you have not received Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, you have the opportunity. You know, we know that you can believe in your heart, and if you believe in your heart, then you can be made righteous. But for even for salvation, we have to declare it with the word, with the, our mouths. We have to speak it. Of course, it's not just salvation that is being born again, but it's in every area. In every area that we would be struggling in, we have to declare it with our mouths and say that which God has already declared for us. So for you who, who want to receive and you have purpose in your heart and you're desiring to receive Christ, receive by actually declaring these words. You can just say these after me. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I believe that the Lord Jesus died and rose again. And in him, and now I believe that I have life in him. Now I believe that I have life. And I receive him as my savior. And from this day forth, I am born again. And I've been made righteous in him. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I give you praise for now saving me. And now knowing that, Lord, now I am in the kingdom. You have made me your child. And I'm a son in the kingdom. I say thank you. For those who have received Christ, believe that that is already taken place in you. And you know that, Lord, the Lord has already done it. It is for your good. And now you have to grow. You have to continuously grow in the word because your spirit has been transformed. You have been now taken from that which is from the old now to the new. And now you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Believe it, it's all by faith. And we're going to teach you. You can call the numbers that are scrolling down there on the screen. And for you, those who are following us, you have those numbers, you can call our prayer center and you'll be encouraged, you'll be taught now that you are a new creation, yeah, you have been made new. Your spirit has now been changed. You have now the spirit of God dwelling in you. You desire now to grow. And you grow by getting to study the word of God. We are going to help you. We are here to help you grow. And even for us who have already received these gifts, because it's a precious gift. It's not something that we work for. It is just for us to receive. For us who have actually been in it, we need to continue growing because we'll never get to attain until when Jesus comes back. That when we get to see him, then we shall know him and we shall know him as he is. For us today, let's uh, believe that now that which has already been revealed for us is for our benefit and we grow in these truths that have been revealed to us. It's no longer a, minister, a mystery. It is there for us to walk in this truth and have the abundant life that Jesus gave, gave to give us and we walk in these truths. Hallelujah. God bless you abundantly. We thank you so, so, so much for being with us today. I know that this was a slightly different. I know, and let's believe and trust God that soon we are going to get back again to uh, the church where we'll be fellowshipping together and we're also going to be sharing this and we'll be ministering this uh, this life, the ministry that gives life and not the death in every area that God has placed us in. I thank you. God bless you abundantly. 
we love you. We thank God for you. And we know that uh, our evangelist also is there. And she's praying for us. And we continue thanking God for her. Thank you even for giving us this opportunity to share the word of God with you. You are blessed and favored of the Lord. In Jesus' name. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Your we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus.